Then there's the, uh, the fourth way, the fourth level, which is, reminds me of how God uh, cheers us on. We don't see it, but um, any time we make the right decision, decisions in life, small or big, we know that um, God, is, God is very interested in that and, and um, has great joy when we make, make the right choices. So I, I just want to share a couple of verses here. The Apostle Paul, Paul often uses the, the image of a race in um, talking about life, and um, there's some verses here that, that there are others as well. But So let, let me just look at this one right here, um, Hebrews. So it says, since we... Since we have such a huge crowd of people of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off everything that slows us down or holds us back, and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. And let us run with patience the race that God has set before us. So this, there's this image. Um, um, I think this was from the, I got this from the Living Bible, which is a paraphrase, but um, I think the NIV translation puts it as a huge huge crowd of witnesses. And um, the chapter preceding this is often referred to, referred to as the Faith Hall of Fame and kind of recounts all the many of the different people, Abraham, Moses, and others, uh, who had great faith. And um, in some cases, they had great victories. Uh, but in other cases, I mean, um, uh, the, the, that chapter, the, that also talks about how some joyfully accepted the confiscation of their property. In other words, that their faith cost them a loss of their homes. Others were sawn in too. I mean, they, they, that doesn't sound like a success, but um, um, it also said, but they were, they, were, they were looking forward to what was gonna come beyond, which was um, a cities uh, with foundations, uh, who's, who, in other words, heaven and um, uh, so um, there's this picture here of, you know, and I don't know whether that people who have died can see what's going on at this time or not. Um, uh, I know that God can see. Uh, God sees what's going on. But uh, there's this sense of cheering people on. And then, um, of course, uh, so and then in the Gospel of Luke, so let me just... So this is also is from, I think this might be from the message, which is uh, um, a paraphrase. I don't remember exactly where I got it, but um, I think it does a good job of getting the points across. So it, it, it says, count on it. That's the kind of party God's angels throw every time one lost soul turns to God. This, this is a verse that comes right after uh, the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. So um, it's it's talking of it, and before that it talks about this party going on in heaven, right? And so that um, uh, the angels and the, and God are very aware of what's going on and rejoice. Uh, again, compared to this picture, this this celebration is small compared to this celebration that goes on when we make the right choices and choose to walk in the truth. Um, and then, uh, again, having, we all have our ups and downs, uh, but just like Matthew Centrowitz's family, if he had lost that race, they would have still been at his next race cheering him on. You know, maybe he failed the last time, get back up, try again. And um, so that kind of brings to mind this the story of the prodigal son, and um, so I'm just going to take the time to read this because uh, it's such a it's such a great story. Um, so this is Jesus speaking. There was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, "Father, I want right now what's coming to me." So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to hurt. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. 
He was so hungry he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take, a, take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to his servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a grain-fed heifer and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And of course, um, the image here is that he was still a long way off and his father saw him. So the way I've heard, heard it explained, his father was probably like up uh, in a tower or some some a hill or something and would daily look for his son to return just waiting for his son to come to his senses and come back and so again what what a beautiful image of of god I mean, that's what it is is um how uh when we go our own way and make mistakes and do the wrong things that god is always there waiting for us watching for us and ready to take us back and, give, and restore our relationship once again. So um, again, this, this, this great image uh, again reminds me of the celebration going on in heaven when we choose to walk in the truth. So uh, again, uh, this is a great video. Uh, I mean, the, Matt, the video of Matt Centros winning the, the gold medal for the U.S. And congratulations to him. Great job. And um, yeah, thanks.